Hello and welcome to today's Wednesday in the Word. We're continuing on our series looking at J.I. Packer's book, Knowing God. Now, last week we began looking at a chapter which has to do with the unchanging character or nature of God. Uh, The technical term to describe that is his immutability. And last week we looked at how God does not change in terms of his life or his character or his truth. This week, we're thinking more about other areas where the Bible shows us God does not change. J.I. Packer highlights three of them. The first is this. God does not change in terms of his ways. We see that particularly in places like Deuteronomy 32. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. In the context, Moses is speaking to the children of Israel as they're about to enter into the promised land. He's declaring the character or nature of God, the God who has been working with us, who's been engaging with us, who's rescued us, who's delivered us, who's brought us to this point, says Moses, is our rock. He's unchangeable in all his ways. All his ways are just ways. He's constantly fair. We can constantly, therefore, rely upon him. Why? Because God does not change in his ways. And the wonderful truth of the Bible is that the same God who dealt with Moses and the people of Israel as he delivered them through the Red Sea and brought them to the Promised Land is the same God who deals with you and me. And he engages with people in the same kind of a way. So God does not change in his ways, nor does he change in terms of his purposes. So we read, for example, in Numbers 23, this, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? J.I. Packer points out the idea that God does not change his mind. He doesn't repent. He doesn't need to repent of any wrongdoing because he never does anything wrong. We can rely upon him that his purposes and his plans are perfect and just right. Now, some people object at this point and go, well, hang on, what about those places in the Old Testament which talk about God repenting? Packer addresses it this way. It is true that there are a group of texts, and there he names them, which speak of God as repenting. The reference in each case is to a reversal of God's previous treatment of particular people, consequent upon their reaction to that treatment. But there is no suggestion that this was not foreseen or that it took God by surprise and was not provided for by his eternal plan. No change in his eternal purpose is implied when he begins to deal with a person in a new way. What Packer is getting at there is the consistent nature of God's purposes, his plans, which the Bible says have been put into place from before time itself began. They're eternal. They're unchanging. And the cross of Jesus Christ is the greatest example of that in terms of how God engages with humanity in time and space according to his eternal purposes. The cross of Jesus, his death on a cross, is no accident. God doesn't change his mind or come up with a plan B when Jesus dies on a cross. It's all part of God's eternal plan. And that brings us to the third aspect of God's unchanging character and nature. God's unchanging in terms of his ways, in terms of his purposes, and God's son does not change. 
We see that in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. What a wonderful thought. The Lord Jesus Christ is exactly the same. The one who walked on this earth then is exactly the same for us today as his spirit works in and through us. One day we will see Jesus physically face to face and yet his spirit continues to work in us today and tomorrow and until that time when we see him face to face. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And the way that we can engage with God through Jesus Christ remains constantly the same. And this is picked up in Hebrews chapter 7. Therefore, he, that is Jesus, is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. You you hear that? Jesus is that constant, consistent, continuous, always lives to intercede. That means he's our constant, continuous go-between, between between us and a holy God. If we want to engage truly with God and know that we can, we do so through Jesus Christ. Why? Because he does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, today forever. What a wonderfully reassuring thing to recognise that whenever we pick up a Bible and engage with the God of the Bible, we see that he does not change. The same God who spoke to those people then speaks to us now. And we can know him and trust him and engage with him through the unchanging person and work of Jesus Christ. It's just extraordinary to think through, isn't it? It's a wonderful thing to appreciate. You can know the unchanging God of the universe today. J.I. Packer concludes this way. Fellowship with him, trust in his word, living by faith, standing on the promises of God are essentially the same realities for us today as they were for the Old and New Testament believers. This thought brings comfort as we enter into the perplexities of each day. Amid all the changes and uncertainties of life, God and his Christ remain the same, almighty to save. I know that your life is constantly in flux and change, mine is too. But the reassurance of what we've been considering this week and last time is this wonderful truth that God is constant. He does not change. He wants us to engage with him, and we can do that when we put our trust in his Son, Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come before you, a holy God, in the name of your unchanging Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, would help each of us to trust in him afresh today. Please help us to recognise that you can be trusted in terms of your character, in terms of your truth, your life, in terms of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that your purposes do not change. Thank you that your ways of engaging with us do not change. Help us, therefore, to come to you on your terms today. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care. God bless you.